Well, this is, I've been, and I was back getting all pumped up because I'm excited. I'm a jaded, like, cynical guy, especially about comedy. You, you know, I could go see meet Bill Cosby about, like, yeah, I like the new stuff and whatever, you know. Like, be a hipster about it. But rock and roll still gets me going. Like, I have no, I, I still, there's, and there's a couple of bands across this country that wipe all my cynicism away. And one of them happens to be the Riverboat Gamblers from Austin. You guys like the Riverboat Gamblers? Yeah, me too. And now I get to introduce their front man. He's been at the Fun, Fun, Fun Fest he wants me to let all you guys know he has no living heirs. So just consider that and put your hands together for Mr. Mike Weeby. Come on up, Mike. South by Southwest, how are we doing, everyone? Yes! I am fucking exhausted. Um, did anybody see anything cool? Did you guys see anything cool this week? Anybody get into Iggy Pop? Yeah, it was, I did. <laughs> it was amazing. The one thing I didn't get into uh, is, because uh, I think it's happening right now, is Prince. Holy shit, Prince at La Zona Rosa? I would love to see that. I love Prince so, what? You agree? I love Prince. <laughs> I love Prince so much. Uh, what? <laughs> I, I'm into going back and forth, but you're going in like a second after I'm talking. I just, I'm, I, 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 just, I just think I just, the word Prince is getting you a little excited. Prince! I love Prince so much. Uh, Prince is one of those guys, like, he's so, like, like, I have a good friend, and she said, the first time I ever masturbated was to Prince. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, he's had, like, he's had so much sex, and he's probably, like, so evolved and weird sexually at this point. Like, I, I don't even, like, what would even it take to get, like, he just, some girl's like, you can do anything you want. And he's like, put your boobs on my butt. <laughs> It was a long way to go to just the fact that I wanted to say, put your boobs on my butt <laughs> on stage at some point. Um, uh, I uh, had a moment this week. I play in a band, and I had a moment that uh, made me feel good. I, for a second, I thought, things are really taking off for my band. I'm going places. People are starting to recognize me. These two guys on the street were like, hey, hey, you, you're that guy. And I thought, oh, uh -huh, I'm getting recognized. Or as we say in the biz, rock-ignized. And this guy's like, hey, you're that guy, you're that guy. And he grabs his buddy, check it out. Check, you're um, you're uh, Marty McFly's dad. <laughs> oh, self-esteem, you stay down here. Um, I did not like uh, being uh, associated with the world's most iconic nerd, and I was complaining to someone about it. I was like, do I, do I really look like Crispin Glover? And, uh, and she said, she goes, well, you know, at the end of that movie, it's uh, Crispin Glover who saves the day, you know? He saves the day and he gets the girl. And I said, well, great, by that reasoning, I will love driving around with my kid's car that runs on trash and flies. <laughs> she said, you're being cynical. And I think that Crispin Glover is really, really, really sexy. And I said, that is a fucking weird thing to say to me, mom. <laughs> I, uh, I did the, uh, I, I unfortunately am not making a full-time living off the show business, but so I work a job, and I said something in passing to a coworker that offended her. I made a joke, and she got really upset. I, was I walked up, and there was a couple coworkers talking, and they were talking about those Scarlett Johansson photos that leaked on the internet a while back. Yeah, Wu was right. <laughs> But I, w I walked up and just totally joked around like, oh my God, she's so hot, she's perfect. And I jokingly said, yeah, she's hot if you like fat chicks. <laughs> just a silly joke. It, wasn't, it, it didn't deserve the laugh there either. <laughs> but she gave me one of these. She, she stopped, it, it halted the conversation, and she gave me one of these. She goes, she goes, <laughs> and then she stormed off. Because she thought I was saying, 
that Scarlett Johansson's fat, and, and, and in her mind, she was thinking, I'm a little bit more overweight than Scarlett Johansson, so you're saying that I'm a fat, disgusting person. And I wanted to run and grab her and tell her, no, I don't think those things, and I think it's totally fucked how the media makes us feel a certain way that we gotta live up to these fucking celebrities. I wanted to grab her and tell her that she's a beautiful person, she should never place her value in fucking celebrity, but then I remembered, oh, I don't like her. Yeah, always snitching on me because I'm not doing my side work quick enough. Mike's always on Twitter. Guess what? Go tell on me because I can't get fired for not liking a celebrity. <laughs> Guess what? Mike also doesn't like the Beatles. Yeah. yeah, okay. I heard a gasp, but let me ask you this. How many of the Beatles are DJs? <laughs> Skrillex represent! Um... Oh, that asshole's, that asshole's putting everyone out of work that plays a guitar. Um, I, uh, I want to tell you guys, I, uh, I think, I'm, think I'm going vegetarian. I was driving through uh, the country, like kind of the, the, that area over there of Austin. And uh, locals know where that's at. Um, and there was a bunch of deer on the side of the road. Like, I was afraid I was going to hit deer. And it, it occurred to me, like, I will never understand why men feel the need to go out and, and, you know, put on camouflage and bring out a gun and shoot these animals. Because I don't know if you've ever seen a deer close up, but they're beautiful, beautiful animals. And I, I just can't understand it. And that being said, I understand why men feel the need to go out and fuck these animals. <laughs> because they're beautiful animals. Um, <laughs> I recently, uh, I recently uh, was driving around and uh, was behind a car, and uh, it was a truck actually, and I had a bumper sticker. And the only way I can read aloud what the bumper sticker said was to use a redneck accent. And it said, it said, God bless our U.S. troops, especially the snappers. <laughs> and I do that face after I say that because when I was growing up, that's how all the rednecks, they just would do that weird simian teeth show after they said something. <laughs> that they thought was clever, and usually it was something like just saying my last name condescendingly. Like, my last name's Weeby, so they'd be like, Hey, what's up, Weeby? <laughs> and I never knew how to res respond to that exactly. But, so, I read that, and because the thing about that bumper sticker is that's not a guy that's saying, Hey, you know, I'm worried about the people from my country overseas, and I really hope that Jesus' daddy looks down and goes, a dink -a -dink, and gives him special, <laughs> special, special sa be safe powers over there. No. If it was just God bless the U.S. troops, then maybe that's what he was saying. But the sniper part, that's basically, that's just a murder enthusiast <laughs> who knows that you have to be more PC about those kind of things. He's, he's, he's trying to deflect the negativity of the fact that he really loves the idea of a long gun making the blood go <laughs> on a brown guy. So I'm traveling behind him. I was like, I, I want to get a look at this fella. And I went around the side of the truck. And of course, it was a, just this white trash guy with like splotchy pieces of ginger red hair. And he, hey, you know, you know when white people have just like straight up white trash bone structure? <laughs> sort of looks like a walking dead zombie, just kind of like a... <laughs> and I, my, my, I, my goal, if, if I could do anything, I would have loved to, because like, he's trying to be PC as he can, but you know he's totally fucking racist, and I would love to go on behind him and just like, like made a copy of that sticker to where it said, God bless the US troops especially as snipers, but in a smaller font, but exactly the same, say, but really especially the black snipers. <laughs> and he'd come out and be like, ah, I like part of it, but ah. Uh. And so I'm, 
I'm driving and I'm like up uh, next to him and uh, I'm kind of like, uh, you know, I'm alongside of him and I'm just kind of look at him. Sometimes I'll just space out on the fucking just the dirtiness of a human. And uh, I kind of, I kind of did the like, uh, he saw me looking at him and then I got freaked out and I kind of did one of these and he went like that and it, our windows were both down and then he said something to me. He goes, you are one dumb motherfucker. And I've been beaten up enough by rednecks to know that if you say pretty much anything back, you're going to get in a fight. He would pull over and fight me. So I knew that my response, my retort, needed to be kind of a Jedi mind trick, just a, a puzzler, a confusing <laughs> statement. And it was just him in the car. So what I said back to him, I just said, oh, yeah? Well, you're two dumb motherfuckers. Mind blown. Ah. <laughs> uh. Thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. I know there's other things happening. Give it up for yourselves. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to do one more thing before I get out of here. And uh, this, is, uh, this is big. This is big. Are you ready? All right. This is an oppression I've been working on for months. I've been going to acting coaches, and I think I've got it down. So what's going to happen is I'm going to turn around and I'll be in character when I turn back around. And you guys are going to come. <laughs> Wait till they get a load on me. <laughs> That's a uh, Joker from uh, Dark Knight, a triple X parody. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Mike Weeby, ladies and gentlemen, keep it going for Mike Weeby.